Hello and welcome to Nights at the Game Table. We're here at Pat's Games in Austin, Texas, where tonight we're playing Modern and an Arc Phoenix is taking on the Hardened Scales. Who's going to win? Watch the episode and find out. Thanks for watching the video. Now, if you want to make sure you don't miss out on any of the other awesome Magic the Gathering content that we create, then make sure you click subscribe so you'll be updated whenever we release a new video. We are coming to the end of the Guilds of Ravnica rotation, so we're taking a little break from standard. We're going to be showing you some modern decks for the next couple of weeks. While you're watching, don't forget, we are still giving away a uh, standard legal box of your choice every month. To be entered into the draw, all you need to do is share this video and then comment down below to let us know you have. You can pick anything that's legal and standard right now, like our recent winner, Liz Jackson, who took home a Guilds of Ravnica booster box. While you're taking care of that, I'm going to go check out the games. All right, well, I'm playing the Hardened Scales Affinity deck, and as the name would suggest, the important card, one of the important cards is Hardened Scales itself. Uh, it helps bump up the plus one plus one counter production of a bunch of other cards in my deck. Another very important card is uh, Arcmount Ravager, which is a uh, old uh, staple in modern that's been in many decks uh, that produces more plus one counters and then can move its plus one counters around when it dies. And then finally, uh, one of my favorite cards is Ink Moth Nexus. Uh, it's a card that uh, can turn your newly minted plus one counters into quick infect damage for fast kills out of nowhere. Uh, so today I'm playing the uh, Arc Light Phoenix Red deck. The three most car important cards in the deck are Fateless Looting, which allows me to draw and discard two. Arc Light Phoenix, which can come back from the graveyard during combat if you've cast three instants or sorceries in a turn. And Bedlam Reveler, which allows you to discard your hand and draw three new cards and becomes cheaper based on the number of instants and sorceries in your deck. And I'm trying to fill my graveyard with spells and cast these cards at a discounted price and overwhelm my opponent. All right, let's see who goes first. Rock crushes <laughs> the scissors. All right. Never. Okay, undefeated in uh, games on camera. I have never, never first. on camera. I will play first. Sounds good. Good luck, sir. You too. Okay. Not a bad opener. I'll keep this. I'm all in. Six. Six. All right, I'll try this. I will leave that card on top. All right, let's Set do this. Off. All right, so I don't have hardened scales to start off, but I do have a pretty explosive hand. Let's start with that. Now that I've got three artifacts, I can produce mana with the opal and make okay. an artbound worker. Sure. Pass the turn. Certainly don't mind emptying most of my hand on turn one. Uh, go ahead. All right. Interesting. Okay. Let's do make an Arcbound Ravager. Yes. Triggers the animation module. Um, I will pay, pay a life yep. in order to make a mana. And make a servo. Yep. And then I'm going to have the Archbound Ravager eat this Mox Opal. Okay. Because I have another one. Um, I will go to attacks. Yes. Attack you with the Archbound Worker. 19. Pass turn. I'm going to cast Tormenting Force, discarding Archbound Phoenix and draw two. Sure. Uh, go. End of turn. I'm gonna have the Ravager eat the servo. Yep. Trigger the animation module to yep. make the servo again. Alright. Throw down another win. Um, let's go to attacks. Sounds good. Attack with these guys. Um, assume you have no blocks. Uh, before damage, I'm going to run this servo through the Arcbound Ravager. Four extra Four damage. more times. Sure. Yes. So, six. So, a total of eight damage? Eight damage. And I took one. I'll put all that. And still end up with a servo. Yep. 
All right, I have an 18, you are at 11? Yep. All right, go ahead. Uh, I'll get two right now. Sure thing. I think I'm going to cast Tormenting Voice, discarding Lava Spike and drop two. Sure. Glad he didn't discard another Phoenix. Because if he's going to come back in this, he's probably going to need an equally explosive recovery. I'm going to cast Lava Spike. Okay. okay yeah. Take three. Yeah, Phoenix back in his Go to 15. Go ahead. Phoenix back on defense. Can't say I mind that. I want to do here. Presumably, you're gonna block the Phoenix, use the Phoenix to block my Ravager. You're at 11. So I could add four more, get to 11 here, and then move it around. Or, effectively, two that way. Yeah. So I'm going to make a hanger back walker on one. Yep. Give myself another option of an attacker with the servo. Um, I could either play for next turn by running his, my Ravager into his Phoenix, or I could try to go kind of all in and put um, all the counters onto either the Servo or the Worker. Um, question is, is that what I want to do? I think I'm just going to make him... So you've got four cards in hand? Correct. Five cards, sorry. Five cards. A card that I'm afraid of is Gutshot. It's a... Spell he can play for free to deal one damage to something, so my attempts to get through for extra damage are going to be stymied by that. Uh, I think I'm just going to attack with all the guys I have on hand that can attack. I'm going to block our crown ravager. Okay, I'm going to let damage result or let damage happen. Sure. So I take two, nine. and your phoenix dies. Correct. And I'll pass the turn. I'm going to cast two Monastery Sospheres and okay. pass the turn. Uh, in a turn, we're going to do the Servo trick. Use sure. it here. Use the uh, animation module to make another Servo. Yep. Just do it once because he might be able to explode and do a bunch of damage to me. So I'm going to preserve my life to a little bit. Um, I'm going to begin, since I drew this, one of my other cards that's kind of broken and modern. Ancient Stirrings, we'll look at the top five. Yep. Try to take a colorless card from among them. Okay, that's interesting. I like that a lot. Spellskite. Not yep. every build of this plays Spellskite main, but I have started doing so because I don't really like the Throne of Geths that are in some lists. Um, I'm going to go ahead and play that Spellskite to protect what I'm about to do. Okay. All right, Spellskite on the board. Uh, let's go to attacks. Sure. Let's put everybody into the pool here. Uh, I'm going to choose to block Arcbound Ravager and Arcbound Walker. Okay. Seem to be kind of daring me to go for this. Alright, um, four damage. Sure. I'm going to eat the Worker with the Arcbound Ravager and move the Worker's counter to the Servo. Sure. Uh, let's go to three. Um, do I wish to make a Servo? I think yes, I'll pay a life. Make another servo token, just in case. Um, I'm going to sacrifice the Archbound Ravager to, to his own ability to then use the modular ability to move the nine counters over to the Hanger Back Walker. Uh, that's good. Okay. Damage? Yep. All right. I'm dead. So the cards that I took out uh, in this matchup were the uh, Lava Spikes, a Tormenting Voice, and one of the Risk Factors. Uh, I, I want to be able to interact more and not have cards that only interact with my opponent's uh, life total. I want to interact with his creatures, so I boarded in Shattering Spree, which destroys artifacts, a braid, which can deal three damage to a creature or destroy an artifact, and Dismember, which is another cheap interaction spell that allows me to disrupt his combo pieces and make it easier for me to win. All right, so I'm taking out um, Evolutionary Leap, which is a card that's meant for more grindy matchups, which this is not. Uh, and then I'm also taking out uh, some of the Steel Overseers and all of the Animation Modules. Uh, despite the fact that Animation Module is really good in Game 1, 
Um, it does take a little setup, and when your opponent is blowing away all of your creatures, some of these things are a little too slow. Uh, I'm bringing in four Nature's Claim. It just seems to come in in almost every matchup, uh, and I'm hoping to hit some of his things like Eidolon or uh, Shrine of Burning Rage if he brings those in. Uh, additionally, I can gain a little bit of life by hitting my own Darksteel Citadel for no effect other than the four life. And then I'm also bringing in a couple of copies of Tormod's Crypt to get rid of his graveyard because he plays a lot out of his graveyard. I'm going to play first. I will keep this in. I will also keep. Go ahead. All right. Lead with a Welding Jar and a Hardened Scales. Sure. And a Moxa. Yep. Go. I'm going to play Tormenting Voice Discarding a Mountain. Okay. Go ahead. Steel Overseer. Yep. Hope this lives. Go ahead. It's got some, but not all of them. three copies of Shattering Spree. Yikes. Uh, two of them targeting this and one of them targeting Mox Oval. So you're doing it twice so I can't Welding Jar the Steel Overseer to keep it around. Correct. Okay. Um, is it worth saving the Mox Oval? I don't think so, considering the rest of my hands, so I think I'm just going to have to let those die. Go ahead. That's rough, especially early. Let's play Horizon Canopy. I'm just going to immediately uh, sacrifice it to draw a card. Sure. That's not what we wanted. I'll pass the turn. I'm actually going to cast our Blight Phoenix and attack him. That's crazy. Uh, I will take the three damage. Go ahead. Okay, that's an action. two counters instead of one, sure. because of the hardened scales, which is one of the fun things this deck does. Um, and I will pass the turn to you. Sure. Mm -hmm. Stern, so we're going to lead off on that and see what other options we have. Okay. Okay, there's some sweet cards in here. If I had other action, this would be a great thing to take, except that it's green. So I think I'm going to take this Walking Ballista. Another card that really likes plus one counters. Let's see. Pendlehaven. Go ahead and cast Walking Wisdom now in case our final worker ends up dying during combat if I decide to attack with it. Uh, X is one on Walking Wisdom. Comes in with two counters. Sure. Because of hardened scales. Um, don't think I can afford to attack into the Arc Light Phoenix though. So I will pass the turn. Uh, one that had a lot of interaction. Uh, I'm going to cast Shattering Speed with four copies. Sounds familiar. Um, All on Dark Steel Citadel, right? I'm kidding. Two on Ballista, one on Worker, one on Orange. Yikes. And ordered such that the Ballista ones will happen before the Worker, I assume? Yes. Uh, so I'm <coughs> not going to get to move those counters around without. So, two here, one here, one here. Is the. Yes. Okay. With the Warding Jar Resolving Glass. Gotcha. 
well. I don't really see a good reason to... Well, I can't keep around the Ballista. Uh, the worker could move his counters to the Nexus if I were to play it that way, but I bet Tad is trying to make that a thing. Well, I'm going to shoot down your Phoenix with the Ballista. I know it'll probably come back, but it's best to have that off the board. Um, and I'm not in range of killing you. So now I got this and then that. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to activate the Aquamont Nexus. And then allow the worker to die to Shattery Spree. Attempt to modular onto the Aquamont Nexus. Okay. Um, so that would be two counters, but is instead three because of the hard scales. And I'll go ahead and regenerate the Aquamont Nexus, because why not? In response, I'll hold it. Alright, how much I can do about that? Uh, kind of combat, have... this is going to come back and attack you for three. Yikes. Alright, I'll take three. Go ahead. So hand is down to one card, though, so okay. maybe I can come back here. Alright, that doesn't hurt. Drew another Ballista. X is two, which becomes three. Sure. Um, I guess I'll wait until combat to shoot down his Phoenix. Go ahead. So that he can't bring it back by interacting during his first main phase. Uh, yeah, let's do that. Combat. Uh, shoot for two. Uh, yeah. Go on three. Always nice to not have to discard anything to the Bedlam Reveler. Or things that you like to discard, at least. I'll pass. Right, to untap with a ballista and four mana. That's nice. And the land. I'm passing because I'm trying to accumulate the number of spells to get my artifact phoenixes back. That so. makes sense. So I have the opportunity to cast this card in my hand or just add two counters to the ballista. I'm not going to get through either way, so I think that just adding an Arcbound Ravager to the board is probably better. Okay. Again, it comes in with two counters. Um, Pass turn. I'm going to cast four more voice to start my life next. Seems pretty good. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Doing some math here to figure out what my line is supposed to be. Yeah. One of the liabilities of playing this deck is your hand is often pretty empty, so. Uh, your opponent may think he has uh, the ability to I will attack you before. to go for the win. Um, I'm at 14. Can I afford to take it? Presumably he didn't have multiple, at least, multiple spells that he was planning to play, otherwise he would have gotten back his two phoenixes. So I don't think the Battle Railroad is going to get much bigger. Being at 10 isn't that bad. So I think I'm going to go ahead and take it. Sure. Any effects? Nope. All right, I'll go to 10. I'm going to cast one Star Swift here and pass the turn. Okay, that's an interesting play. Uh, end of turn, I'm going to activate the Rising Canopy to draw a card. One tap. Draw for turn. Those are both cards I love to see. So, let's go ahead and add them to the board. So, a second Arc Bound Ravager allows for all sorts of shenanigans of moving counters around. Um, you can do your normal uh, all-in type things with Ravager without really getting punished because you have a second one to have as backup. Um, and then I've got the Inkmoth Nexus, which means I'm threatening to kill him next turn uh, if he has nothing. But of course he's got multiple cards in hand. Um, I think I am going to pass for now. Just walking with this is actually kind of a problem for me, so... Figure out what I can do. Okay. I'm going to cast a Mothlight Phoenix. Okay. Um, and I'm going to pay for life and attempt to dismember this. Attempting to dismember my ballista. 
So you have one card left in hand. You've played one instant or sorcery so far this turn. Card. So the odds that you're going to be able to play something to get back multiple phoenixes is pretty low, though not impossible. Um, but I think if it was something like uh, Manamorphose, you would have already cast it to make sure that that was going to happen for you. Well, first thing I'm going to do is give plus one, plus two, Walking Ballista with the Pendle Haven. So that gives it three toughness. Um, and I'm going to have this Arcbound Ravager eat a Darksteel Citadel. Bump it up to four counters. Mm -hmm. Then I'm going to have this Ravager eat that Ravager. Try to move the modular counters to the Ballista. Is that what resolve? Hold on. Sure. So what's going on? So this Ravager is, tra is eating, a, eating an artifact to gain a counter, which will be two counters. This Ballista is where the modular target is from the first Ravager. So it's got four counters coming to it, which will be an extra five. This currently has three toughness. So it will survive the dismember. Assuming nothing else happens. Two little straight. So that. Fiery Temper. I'm trying to deal three damage to this. So if I were to add counters to the Ballista, I could survive the Fiery Temper and then also survive the dismember. Kind of don't want to do the math wrong on camera, but I feel that it is probably correct to put you in a situation where I can. You're out of cards in hand, right? Correct. Sure. Okay. I'm going to activate the Equal Nexus, sure. and sacrifice it to the Ravager. Okay. So it gets another counter, which ends up being two counters. I'm going to sacrifice it to itself. So this is going to end up being useless, but I'm going to move four counters, which becomes five here. Yes. So he's got uh, six counters on him, takes three damage, and then adds five more counters. So he's going to be at effectively eight fewer units right now. So he's effectively three three. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, Combat. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Um, I can block like this, and then kill the phoenix, and then my ballista dies, unfortunately. Take three. Sure. Kind of put myself in a bit of a hole here. Uh, go. <clears throat> okay, that's something. Yep. So the two counters. Go ahead. Yes, it is. Uh, I get to drop three new cards. Just the Phoenix. I'll take it. Go. Go five. That's where my math screwed up. Forgot to count something. Um, this is pretty bad. I don't think he's going to let me through for 16 somehow. Um, I'm not going to be able to block everything, and I'm at five. I'll just pass the turn. Hope he decides not to attack me. <laughs> Um, block the biggest one, make my guy bigger. Okay. But it doesn't matter, I still take lethal. Yep. Alright, let's play game three. Good luck, sir. Okay, that's interesting. I will keep this. Uh, yeah, I'm waiting. Alright, this hand is a little slower than the explosive starts we've had in the previous two games, but it does feature a sideboard card. Sure. Go ahead. My hand's a little risky, but we're going for it because we have all those sideboard cards. Go ahead. <laughs> and now all those things and his lands are live. Wonderful. Hey, your back walker. Get that count back on the play. Go ahead. Really like hanger back walker in this matchup because even if he blows it up, I usually still get some value out of it. Okay. I'm going to pass it back. It's 
clearly presenting some kind of burn spell. Um, getting in for one damage is probably not worth it. I probably just want to grow my hanger back walker, but I'd sure like it to tap out before I do that. So I think I'm just going to pass the turn. I'm going to pass it back. Alright, we're going to attempt to add a counter hanger back walker. I'm going to lightning bolt it. Just lightning bolt it. Well, that's going to happen. This is going to turn into a thopter. Okay. Hmm. Well, I think. Go ahead with two attacks. Yep. Thopter. 19. Oh, I don't think. Let's see. He didn't play a land for the last couple turns, so I think he is a little behind on that front. Hopefully, the walking ballista is able to stick. Go ahead. I'm going to pay for life. Got 15. I'll shoot you for two. Got a response. Go ahead. A small amount of desperation on his part to slow the tough, slow the uh, uh I'm gonna cast the Metamorphos. Sure. Adding red, red, drawing the card. Metamorphos is pretty good for getting out from under mana screw. Uh, I'm gonna cast a Monastery Sorcerer. Okay, one red floating. Now I'm going to shatter and sweep this token. Okay. Attack you for three. Uh, two. Two, two yeah, because the other was before. Alright, I'll take two. Go ahead. Interesting draw. Uh, well, free shot with the ink. Well, next is two for one. Life. What? We have a gut shot, free spell. That is unfortunate. Um, yeah, my cloth is down. Despite yep. it looking like I could get through for free. Um, pass the turn. Oh. Oh, since I didn't get Tormach tripped yet, I'm just going to cast this. Okay. Any phoenixes? Is a risk factor in there? No. Let's see. Two, five, ten, ten. Keep waiting on the Tormod script that resolves. Attack. Uh, no block. One? Yep. Get a Go. 17. Alright, well, Ink Moth Nexus is back. Unfortunately, it can't attack yet. Um, hmm. I think I'm going to go ahead and use Tormod's Crypt. Get rid of a couple of spells he has in the graveyard. Um, and I'm just going to pass the turn. Sure. Old fashioned beat down. Five. Taking five. Going to twelve. Mark down Yep. Alright. Three cards in hand, all of which were drawn. That one where it was draw for turn. Alright, lands. Hmm. Well, we're gonna throw down that back of Hormat's Crypt now in case he goes for a Phoenix turn this next turn. And I'll pass. I really need something like an Arcbound Raptor to turn these Dark Steel Citadels into beats. Man, it's just Swift Spears all over the place. Uh, yeah. We're just attacking. Okay, so three, four, five, six. I'm at 12, that put me at six. It's pretty dangerous. I'm gonna win this game. I probably need to keep the Saint Moth Nexus alive. 
but I'm not sure there's a way I can survive to do that if it does not also block something. Kind of impossible to do both. Um, I'm going to activate the Nexus so I can receive the work, Arcbound Worker's counter. Sure. Um, I'm only going to block with the Worker on the Bedlam Reveler. Okay. Damage? Sure. All right. Modular Trigger targeting Nexus. Two and three. Going to nine. All right. So there's a counter on my Nexus. Go. Cool. And he did not punish me for that, which is interesting. Lands keep coming. Thankfully, they are artifact lands, so if I draw a Ravager, they get better. So I didn't play anything to hit me for extra damage. It would kind of indicate that I can attack with eight moth nexus. Do I plan to block with it? Is the question. So, if I attack with the nexus, then I can't block with it, which means he can kill me in the crack bag. I think if I'm going to win this, I have to kind of go for it. Get him closer at least. Attack or two? Two poison, right? Yep, two poison. Okay. Let's go with this poison. Go ahead. Okay. Third land is scary. No blocks? No, uh, before damage, I'll let you hold Trigger. Um, in response. Yep. I'm going to cast my uh, Nature's Claim on my own Indestructible Dark Stone Set of Game 4. Yep. Hopefully that will be enough to survive. So still 13. Still 13. All right, well, I go to 13 and take 13. Yep. <clears throat> it's unfortunate. All right, good games. Thank you. Well, I really like the explosive starts I got in games one and two, and the one in game one, uh, I was able to ride to victory. Uh, game two, I kind of had a problem with the math. Uh, I forgot that I had uh, given plus one, plus two to my walking ballista that would allow me to survive and then kill him on the crackback. Uh, game three, uh, even though he got a little mana screwed, uh, I wasn't able to put enough pressure on him to, to finish him off uh, early enough, and he was able to recover. Um, surprisingly, going wide ended up being uh, his path to victory. Um, I really love this hardened scales deck. Um, the ability to... <clears throat> sort of out-math people. Uh, you know the, the combinations and you can sort of chunk the, the math side of the deck uh, in ways that your opponents often can't, uh, especially when you have information they don't about what's in your hand. Allows you to be really explosive and sort of kill out of nowhere. So there are many games where I'm able to top deck an Arcbound Ravager and then immediately from there play it and kill my opponent, either with 20 damage or with uh, 10 poison counters from the Ink Moth Nexus. Uh, things that went well, uh, kind of got lucky that in the second game where the math kind of overwhelmed both of us and I was able to get an extra couple extra turns to win the game. The first game, he kind of just dumped his hand on turn one and I died. It wasn't really a close game. My deck didn't really produce a functioning hand. It also, uh, kind of affected that I didn't draw any faithless lootings early on in any of the games. So the starts of the deck weren't that explosive. Uh, I definitely drew more sideboard cards than he did. Shattering Spree is definitely very strong in this matchup. Uh, being able to deal with multiple permanents in with one spell, just dumping all of my mana into it and being able to deal with three or four permanents was great. Uh, this deck in general, I think, is very has some explosive draws, uh, has some filtering, but can have some complicated decisions to make on when you're supposed to discard spells or when you're supposed to wait because as you can see, like in the second game, I kind of got stuck with multiple phoenixes in my graveyard because I never had three spells to cast uh, that were instants or sources to get it back. And that's about what I think of the deck. The deck is fairly explosive. You can have some really good draws. It's just, it takes some practice and it's sometimes complicated. Well, there you have it. After a tragic calculation error from Joel in game two, the arc-like phoenix burned its way through the hardened scales in the end. To see more content from Man of Wars and Knights at the Game Table, you can like our page on Facebook. If you're watching on YouTube, you can click the subscribe button down below. And we will catch you next time on Knights at the Game Table.